the eyes of the world are still on Ukraine. And a lot continues as sanctions will uh, get more strict or deeper today. How can we we get even What else can we do? The pressure is on. Joining us on our Disk Institute of Pittsburgh Newsline, United States uh, Congressman Guy Reschenthaler, representing our 14th Congressional District. Guy, good morning. Gentlemen, thanks for having me on, and good morning. Just as a citizen, and I know... You've, you've served our country in the military, so I, I give any veteran uh, different perspective. But when we see, just as citizens, these atrocities that are going on in Ukraine, day in, day out, hard to watch, creating uh, just such anxiety. And people keep saying, well, what can we do to make a stop on Russia? What are your thoughts when you see what's going on there? Well, it absolutely sickens me, of course. And, you know, I've been calling now, I think, for two or three weeks, if not longer, for a no-fly zone. Because at the end of the day, what we have to do to stop this is we have to stop the Russian military. Uh, These sanctions were meant to deter. Uh, The administration has even said they've not deterred uh, Russia from continuing aggressions. Of course, the Russian economy, uh, they're a totalitarian regime, so the economy sinks. They can still continue continue on because they're not that worried about popular support. We need to stop the Russian military, and we can do that quickly by the imposition of a no-fly zone. We could also use electronic warfare. Uh, We should, of course, get those MiG-29s to the Ukrainians. It's absolutely shameful that we still haven't got those MiG-29s to them. Uh, Stingers, Javelin missiles, switchblade drones that would target Russian tanks and also Russian um, uh, naval vessels. For example, but but again, if we sit on the sidelines, if we continue to refuse to engage, there will be more civilian casualties. It's it's unbelievable, and, and you're seeing the images. And when I read about it at the UN, what the UN says, they say it would be an alleged war crime still, because they haven't investigated it. They're not able to investigate it yet, and so they have to go verify whether it's a war crime or not. But the men of Ukraine. They were told they could not leave the Ukraine. So would that make every man in Ukraine a soldier at that point? Well, I think that's what you're seeing now. And remember, Ukrainians are actually coming into Ukrainian men are coming back into Ukraine to defend Ukraine, which is quite, quite amazing. Uh, But going back to the war crime idea, you know, I know you're I know the international community is using alleged war crimes. Technically, it's not proven in court, but. When you see images of civilians with their hand tied that have been shot uh, behind the head, we know also that the Russians are specifically targeting civilians, uh, schools, uh, civilian property. We know there's a lot of counts of sexual assault. Uh, those are war crimes. So it is very, uh, it, to me, it's very obvious that the Russians are engaging in war, crime, it, war crimes. And their whole strategy really is a war of attrition. For whatever reason, our intel community and top military brass here thought this was going to be a quick quick war, almost like a blitzkrieg strategy. Uh, I always thought the Russians were going to use a war of attrition approach, and that's what we're seeing going on right now. So they they want to break the spirit of the Ukrainians, and they want Ukraine to cede that territory in the east and also in the south along the Black Sea to Russia. And to get the Ukrainians to do that, they really need to break the Ukrainian spirit to fight. We're with United States Congressman Guy Reschenthaler. That said, I, I would imagine that uh, President Zelensky is pleading with the world, pleading with the U.N. for additional help. Uh, you're asking our own country to do more. Uh, do you see any kind of way that they can end this peacefully and move on. We hear they have talks, but they don't seem to be going anywhere. No, the Russians are not negotiating in good faith. Uh, And the Russians may be giving up some territory, but it's because the Ukrainians are engaged in a a counteroffensive. Also, the Russians had some serious supply issues with logistics, so it was really a strategic withdrawal, um, not not a retreat in good faith. They They really want to keep, the Russians really want to keep the territory that they gain. And what I fear is that Joe Biden in the West will sell Zelensky down the river and say the Russians can keep the territory they, they've taken. 
that will only invite future aggression, just like in 2014 when the Obama administration allowed uh, the Russians to keep Crimea. Again, that was Ukrainian territory. It just fueled Russia's desire to take more. What I would like to see is I would like to see Russia give up all the territory they've taken from 2014 to present. Uh, and I'd like to see the sanctions continue on Russia to make sure that Putin, his family, and the oligarchs surrounding him feel maximum pressure uh, on that. And then, of course, we, we do need, once this conflict is over, we do need to look at uh, prosecuting individuals who committed war crimes, just not the soldiers on the ground, but, uh, but the generals and, and the top brass who were, making, who were giving the orders. And speaking of war crimes, I just tweeted it out, the UN.org definitions of war crime using the Rome Statute of International Criminal Court. So that's at Kevin Battle. And uh, Congressman Guy, uh, what about regime change in Russia? You say the Ukrainians are putting more pressure on Russia. Uh, Vladimir Putin could be in a vulnerable spot. What would a regime change look like? And is that what we really want or not? I, so I think it's very dangerous to say, we, look, I would love to have a regime change in Russia, of course. I think that's a pipe dream, though. And I also think it's dangerous for the West to talk about regime change, because what that does is that forces Putin into a corner and it, um, it will make him act even more aggressively. I would like I would like to see regime change, of course, but let's focus on repelling this invasion, getting that no-fly zone established, getting more involved to repel the Russians, then we can deal with it afterward. Whether or not that's trying Putin for, for a war crime in The Hague or not, I don't know what that looks like, but I really think that's a pipe dream. If anything's going to happen in Russia, it's much more likely that there'll be internal pressure on on the oligarchs to get Putin to step down or to detain him in some way. But again, that is a pipe dream. This is a very sophisticated government. Uh, this isn't some third world nation where you know a group of people can have a coup. Uh, this is this is Russia. He's got sophisticated bodyguards and um, uh, measures measures in place. Also, it's a totalitarian state. Uh, if you protest in Russia, you're going to jail for three years. Uh, your your life is over. You're not going to get any uh, any jobs of, of substance uh, in the future. It's 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 cancel culture on steroids in Russia, just like it is in China. Congressman Guy Rushenthaler, thank you for your time this morning. Gentlemen, thanks.